It's never been a better time to be a Revon customer. When you sign up or switch to Revon Broadband Internet, not only do you receive free installation, a free modem, and three months of service for free, you are also automatically entered to win up to $5,000 in prizes, like a 60-inch smart HDTV with Bose surround sound system and Rev TV premium, Rev Voice home phone service, complete with a portable phone system, a laptop, and Revon Extreme Broadband Internet service. Already a Revon customer? No problem. You are also eligible to win a prize package as well. What are you waiting for? Call us to sign up or switch today. Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned in to MB12, broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Coming up tonight in news, angry FNM supporters gather last night for a rally after their leader was named in the House. The Prime Minister applauds FNM MP Edison Key, a large shantytown thriving on Crown Land. Plus, a young man attempts to honor his father's artistic legacy. We've got those stories and so much more coming up. I'm Paige McCartney, and MB12 starts right now. Welcome once again to MB12. Free National Movement supporters are seeing red after police escorted Dr. Hubert Minnis from the House of Assembly yesterday. He was named and barred from the next two House sittings after he refused to withdraw comments he made about Prime Minister Prairie Christie, a move that led to a clash between FNM MPs and police. While angry FNM supporters flooded the party's headquarters last night after a party leader sent out a red alert urging Bahamians to join them in the fight for democracy. It was the opposition's first rally since the North Abaco by-election. Bonnie Toot was there and she has details. Election season ended well over a year ago. However, leaders of the Free National Movement have declared that the campaign has begun. Hundreds of FNM supporters gathered here at the party's headquarters on Mackey Street Wednesday night to stand in support of their leader, Dr. Hubert Menace. Menace's removal from the House of Assembly Wednesday galvanized nearly 400 party faithfuls who crowded the parking lot and even spilled into the streets in a scene reminiscent of a pre-general election rally. They were responding to a red alert the party sent out minutes after he was escorted from the House and barred from the next two sittings. The event also featured an old crowd favorite from the campaign trail. Enthusiastic supporters, all decked out in red, embraced Deputy Leader Loretta Butler-Turner, who blocked police officers' access to menace during yesterday's scuffle. Montague MP Richard Lightborn, who was roughed up during their clash with police, says voters only get excited every five years. However, the Christie administration awoke the giant yesterday. There was a principle for which we stood, our leaders stood, and he must be supported, and the entire team gave him our support. This is not the time to be weak. This is not the time to be divided. I want you to take the message back to those who are afraid to be here tonight. Tell them Butler Turner also used the opportunity to put Labor Minister Shane Gibson on blast after he held up an iPad in Parliament yesterday showing a picture of her at the funeral of Peter Nygaard's mother. While she acknowledged that she was invited to the service back in 2010, the Long Island MP asserted she never set foot on Nygaard Key. Shane Gibson, I will answer him. Never put foot in a place called Nigar Key. 
invited to her residence because they cremated her. But I can tell you all about that another time. As party officials held up placards that read, democracy will not be muzzled, Minnis told the crowd he will not be silenced on an issue as critical as stem cell therapy and research. He said he found it laughable that more than 10 officers, including two assistant commissioners, were called in to remove one man. And I was surprised with all the crime, rape, robbery that's going on in this country. They had almost half the police force to arrest me. Yes. I was committing no crime. I was not ready to steal anything. The only thing I wanted to do was defend democracy and take this country back. South Africa Member of Parliament Edison Key was noticeably absent from the Appenham's mini rally, and he did not support Minnis's actions in the House. However, Butler Turner says the other seven members of Parliament are standing strong. I can say seven of us stood strong today. Seven is God's number. And I want you to know that today is the seventh of August. And I want you to know seven times, seventy times, seventy. We are ready. We will continue to campaign. We will move from corner to corner, street to street, constituency to constituency, island to island, and we will not stop until we reach government house when we are sworn in as the new government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Amen. Reporting for NB12, I'm Bonnie Tude. While progressive Liberal Party members of Parliament blasted the opposition leader for defying the Speaker's orders and clashing with police as members of the Freedom Farm Youth Baseball League watched from the visitors' gallery. Their coaches hurried to get them out of the lower chamber as police stormed in. However, Montague MP Richard Lightbourne argued last night that House Speaker Kendall Major allowed them to sit in on the morning session knowing a team of police officers was waiting by the entrance to escort Minnes out. And to me, it's very embarrassing when you come to Parliament and here we see 30 children sitting in Parliament. Now, why did he bring them there? He knew there was going to be some issue today. He knew there was going to be some confrontation. Otherwise, he wouldn't have 15 policemen standing at the door of Parliament and must be another 20 or 30 on the outside. He knew that there was going to be confrontation. Yet he wants to suggest that we're the ones who should feel embarrassed because of what happened in Parliament. So we're supposed to sit there like a bunch of lambs while they do whatever they want simply because we have the children in Parliament. They should not have invited them there. They should not have been there. And as we noted, there was only one opposition member left sitting in the House of Assembly yesterday as the remaining Free National Movement members of Parliament stormed out of the lower chamber behind minutes. Since then, questions have swirled about the future of Edison Key in the FNM. Some observers have even ventured to wonder if yesterday's events will lead to Key's return to the Progressive Liberal Party. Key entered the political arena in 1977, serving two terms as PLP senator. He left that party in 2004. Prime Minister Christie says if Key decides to return to the PLP, he would be welcomed. Edison Key never evinced an intention to rejoin the PLP. Um, clearly, the PLP is a party with a big tent. Uh, minutes under right circumstances could apply and be made welcome. Christie says in the wake of yesterday's events, he applauds Key for standing up for what he believes in. I thought Minnis betrayed the principles of constitutional democracy and his FNM colleagues and Edison Key was singularly okay, in favor of the democracy. So you, I put it the other way. I didn't see him as betraying colleagues. I saw him as recognizing colleagues had gone beyond the boundaries of constitutional restraint and that he is to be applauded for what he's done. Edison Key became a member of the FNM in 2007 and was elected to represent South Abaco later that year.